What's up everybody, TCM here, back with another video. And today I wanted to tell a story that happened to me actually last week. I was performing an internal penetration test against an organization and I got domain admin in a very, very unique way, something that was new for me. And I wanted to talk through it because it shows that the level of persistence that it takes sometimes to be a ethical hacker or penetration tester and it shows uh, kind of the outside of the box thinking that you need to have. If you just do the straightforward, run your tool, see what happens kind of thing, you are going to miss stuff when you do a penetration test. So in this video, we're going to cover that story. We're going to walk through the environment, what it looked like, and how I ended up actually getting domain admin. But before we do that, we're going to take a quick word from our sponsor. So let's do that now, and then we're going to hop right into the story. Today's video is brought to you by Keeper Security. Keeper protects your organization's passwords with an ultra secure and easy to use vault your employees will love. Keeper enables your employees to securely create and share strong passwords and is the highest rated product in the industry. As an example of how Keeper security works, take this TCM Security Academy sign up page. Here I've got my name and my email address. Now I want to create a password, but I don't want to always use the same password that I create. So if I click into the password box, Keeper automatically populates this and generates a strong password for me. As you can see, I have a password length of 20 here, but I can actually increase it to 100 if I wanted to. And I can copy that. I can randomize it. I can tell it A to Z, 0 to 9, special characters, whatever I want in here. I can copy that and I can even fill this in and paste this. And then I can sign up with an incredibly long password. Another cool feature is the vaulting system. Now I can come up to the vault and retrieve my password. Or if it knows the website that I'm going to and I go to log in, it'll autofill my password and sign me in all without having to press a single button. It's that awesome. So to get Keeper Security, follow the link in the description below and receive a free three-year personal plan of Keeper's award-winning consumer password manager. Okay, so this was an internal penetration test, and I'm going to give you the scope here. The scope was about 500 IP addresses. This was a medium-sized business, not too small, not too big. And they had never been through a pen test before, which there are some signs there. Uh, they were doing some things right. They were doing some things wrong. Uh, on the wrong side, there's a lot of default things that happen in Active Directory. In, in internal environments, a lot of them, most of them use Active Directory. And it ships with some features that are vulnerable. If you've ever watched any of the courses that I have on YouTube, or if you've ever done the practical ethical hacking course, a lot of this is going to sound familiar to you. But one of the big things that we check for when we're doing an internal pen test is we're looking at something called LLMNR poisoning, which is link local cast multi name resolution. Yeah, that's a mouthful. But what we're looking at is we're looking for events to happen essentially in a network. And when those events happen, we actually capture a hash of the user's password. Now, if the user's password is weak, then we can go take it and crack it offline and then try to use that against an organization. It opens up a bunch of attacks if we're able to find a valid credential within a network. So what we were seeing in this network is we were seeing LMNR being wide open. We were getting hash after hash. There was just hashes flying all over the network. And we were able to actually crack a lot of these passwords. The password policy was pretty weak. It was technically eight characters, but there were no like numbers or special characters. We saw some passwords that were like literally password. OK, so the passwords are very weak. We were capturing a lot of hashes. I think we captured 50 unique user hashes and we were able to crack 20 something of them right away. So it's one of those situations where, OK, typically that's money because now organizations a lot of organizations, I'd say most organizations, give users local admin rights on their machine. And sometimes they give users local admin rights on other machines as well. So one of the first things that we check when we get a credential is where does this credential work? Does it work on the user's machine? Does it work on any other machines? And when I say where does it work, I, I'm saying where can this user log into as an administrator? In this instance, this network did not have any local admins, not even on their own machines. That's awesome to see. So we weren't able to perform a lot of the attacks that we normally do. So if we are getting non-admin user hashes and we are cracking them, it's doing us no good because we can't get into any of their machines, including their own. 
There's just nothing that we can do in that situation. And that was cool. I actually really like seeing that. Uh, another thing that they had going on was they actually had um, very few domain admins, like I'd say like three. So basically I had to wait for an event to happen. I had to wait for like a domain admin to happen. And if I can capture a domain admins hash, which I was able to capture one and then crack it, which I was not able to do, then we'd have domain admin. Okay, so that unfortunately did not happen. The other thing that we were seeing was what is called an IPv6 relay attack. This is one of those features of Microsoft and Windows in general. Uh, so what's happening is we can act as a IPv6 DNS server and we can relay events. Again, I'm keeping this high level, but we can relay events. So if we see a user come through, we can relay that to a domain controller and we can maybe, if the user has enough privileges, actually get access to the domain controller where it'll create a new user for us. Now, what's great about that is we don't have to capture a hash. We don't have to try to crack a password. We don't have to do anything along those lines. All we need is a some sort of elevated privilege. So now if we can catch a domain admin in the action, uh, creating an event, causing an event for IPv6, all you have to do is log into the network. So if we can catch an admin in action, we can relay that, get a, uh, a domain admin account created, and then we're in. The issue with IPv6 and being a DNS server is it breaks stuff. So I typically run it for five, maybe 10 minutes at a time. Um, if the attack is unsuccessful in those 10 minutes, I pull back, I wait maybe an hour and I run it again. So when you're in a time engagement, uh, you, you have, you know, I had a week on this engagement. I had to try to plan out, okay, when is this domain admin or when are the domain admins logging in? Typically in the morning and then typically after lunch. Uh, <laughs> I could not catch them. I, I just, anytime I, I thought I knew their schedule and I could see when they were logging in because I had some access to, to uh, look at the Active Directory login times, but I wasn't able to, I wasn't able to catch them. So I thought I had them. I would get in and log in at that time, have it ready. And then they would log in five minutes earlier or 10 minutes later. Uh, so it was one of those situations where yes, it would have worked if I had enough time, but in this situation I didn't. So then I had to start looking around and seeing what else I could get into. So when the basics don't work, we start looking at other things. I start looking for patching issues. There were no patching issues, like very, very few patching issues. Nothing that's going to have remote code execution. Again, very impressed. They did have antivirus. I was able to detect that in the network. They did have an EDR. I was actually able to detect that as well. And I was going around and just looking. I was looking at, OK, well, what about default credentials? You've heard me talk about on this channel, if you've been a long time user, that uh, I've gotten domain admin from a printer before because I could log into the printer, I could get access, and then I was able to dump credentials or do a pass back attack and get credentials, and they were overly permissive. In this situation, no default credentials. Uh, there was just nothing there. They had everything buttoned up very well. So all it took, though, was one little mistake that chained into other little mistakes that got me where I needed to be. So I started digging. I started looking at the users that I had and I started just saying, OK, where do these users have access? We don't have admin access, but what about file shares? So the first thing I did was I got access to file shares and I saw like like literally every single alphabet letter, like A to Z and, and map drive. So I started clicking through them. Uh, it was a lot of Intel, a lot of data. I started trying to search. It took a while. I was trying to find passwords or anything sensitive that I could find. And while I was doing that, I actually did sort of a watering hole attack where um, it's called a URL file attack or URL path attack, where basically you can capture hashes as well. So what I did was if you put a certain file into a share drive, um, if a user accesses that share drive, it automatically will pass a hash to you, similar to LMNR poisoning. So in that situation, I was waiting and just trying to see, OK, if I go put these in different folders, maybe an admin will get on there and I can get their hash and maybe I can crack it and get lucky if they have a weak password. Unfortunately, that didn't happen either. I did get a lot of hashes from it. Again, no domain admins. I don't know what they were doing, but they weren't going into their file shares. So I started digging around and it turns out that I actually had access to 
uh, a lot of folders that I probably shouldn't have had access to. So I was able to go through what was called like a public share folder. Um, I don't know if it was actually public. I, it's like one of those situations where you have all the employee shares and in there you are supposed to be able to only access your share. Well, for some reason, the user I found was able to access everybody's share. So guess what? I start looking at the domain admins and I start digging through their files in their share folders. Well, I found one domain admin that had a computer setup guide. There was one for a Windows and there was one for a Mac. The first time I looked at it, I looked at Windows and I said, Mac's probably not useful to me. I'm not going to do anything with this. So I looked at Windows, nothing relevant in Windows. Like, yeah, how they set up their computers. Great. Nothing great in there. I just wrote off the Mac setup and I left it. I came back the next day and I was like, you know what? I got one day left on this assessment. I'm going to just check through the files that I I've been through before in folders and just see if anything's changed. I went back in there and I said, forget it. I'm just going to look at the, the Mac setup and we'll just see what we can find. Well, in the Mac setup instructions was a password. It said, hey, use this password when you set up the Mac computers because uh, this is the default password that we use when we start setting this up. OK, uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to try that password and see what happens. So I ran a tool in the network called Crack Map Exec and basically just passed that password around to every single machine to see if I was a local admin anywhere. So I just gave the username of administrator and I gave the password and I just saw what happened. Um, they were using what's called LAPS in their network, and LAPS uh, basically allows local account passwords to have unique passwords. So I wasn't very hopeful. Uh, I saw like the LAPS setup guide and all the things in their in their folders. So I, I was kind of getting some intel on how the uh, domain was set up. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to access most of anything except for one machine. So I was able to log in to this machine with this password. It had to have been a local admin password, something they set up a long time ago, maybe never installed laps on. So they just were using that. Literally the only machine on the network that had that password where it worked. So with that, I ran a tool called Secret Stump against that server. Well, wouldn't you know it, there was a service account running on that, uh, that server that was running in the registry. So they had that service account set up locally to that server and it was storing the password to that service account in clear text. What's interesting about that service account? Well, it was a domain admin. Thus, the service account logged me into the domain controller. And from there, it was game over. So it's one of those situations where literally if anything could have like in that chain could have gone wrong, right? So um, we could have not gained access to the share drive. Uh, if we didn't have access to that, we never would have found the file. Uh, we could have found the file that didn't have password in it and that would have prevented us from finding the rest of it. Uh, we could have found the server, but they weren't running a, uh, a service account as a domain admin, or they weren't running a service account with, uh, with the password in clear text in the registry. And that would have stopped this attack completely. Now, there were other ways and avenues that we could have gotten in, and there were some red flags that were there, but this company was doing a lot of things right. Like they had a very expensive EDR, which didn't catch me, which shows a lot about EDRs. Um, I actually, once I compromised the domain controller, I went back and I started just running like intentional malware to see what it would catch. And the only thing it caught was uh, interpreter payload. So it was not a very... Uh, I, I don't think the baselines are set up on it. It's a very expensive, very well-known EDR, just did not work in the way that it was intended, I think. Um, that didn't work, antivirus didn't work, and it's it's just, they, they did a lot of things right and have a lot of setup, but when you only have a team of two to three people on your IAT team, uh, for an organization that size, you're gonna run into some issues, probably some misconfigurations, little things like that that can take down a network. So, this whole story I'm telling you, one, because it was fun, it was exciting. And if you actually look at the, the Uber hack that's going around right now, it's a very similar story that, that just came out of how they broke in and they just started digging around. They were able to find a password and a file and they were able to access all kinds of things. Pretty interesting. It's real world. This is like, uh, you know, in pen tests, we're up against the wall. We, we have a timed engagement. We have to just kind of do what we can within a set period of time. But... This is one of those things to say, hey, don't just say, 
oh, I, I did my checkboxes. I, I ran the tools that I'm supposed to run. Well, you're doing a disservice if you do that because there are, in my opinion, more times than not, a path to, uh, there's paths to domain admin. There's paths to the sensitive files. There's paths to whatever the goal your client has. More times than not, that is present within the network. Now, are you going to find it within the time frame or the scope that you have? Maybe, maybe not. But you should challenge yourself to find that. Uh, and you should keep challenging your clients and tell them like, hey, here's how I found it. Here's all the things wrong. Go fix this. So that way, next year when I come back, I've got a new challenge in front of me and we can see if we can actually get domain admin. My goal when I'm pen testing is I'm hoping I, I get stopped, but uh, more times than I don't just because that's the, the nature of the beast. But uh, yeah, so this is a, a lesson, hopefully a cool story time, just something you can tell I'm real energetic. This is like a, almost a single cut of a video here. So I just really wanted to share this story. Uh, I shared it on LinkedIn and it, it kind of took off. So I thought it would be great for video format as well. But that is it for this video. I think I'm done rambling. So until next time, I will see you later. Peace out.